Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. No boats, no traffic, no Big Ben. I'm, I'm sick of even trying any of that. It's a nightmare, nightmare. So uh, now I look like a kidnapped victim, a hostage um, in a cell. I'm just sitting in a quiet corner in the hotel room. <laughs> right, so Harry and Meghan want to go to Sandringham for Christmas. I think we guessed that last week, didn't we? Maybe before that. In fact, a few years ago, I distinctly remember a lot of people saying, I predict that after a couple of years, they will come crawling back because they'll probably run out of money, probably run out of options. I think Jermaine Greer said, if they're left to their own devices without any interference from anybody, it's bound to be a complete unmitigated disaster. And she was absolutely right. Who knew someone like Jermaine Greer would come out with something like that? Very prophetic. So, I mean, the article is in the Daily Mail. It's not the head story now, but it was this morning. It was the top story that basically says... Harry and Meghan have not been invited to Sandringham for Christmas, but if they were to be, they would definitely accept. However, it adds, and it's inside sources and the Daily Mail say, we have taken comment from the Sussex team on various parts of the article. The Daily Mail, Harry and Meghan are quite happy to sue them. So, you know, Daily Mail, maybe they're making it up. I seriously doubt it. It's certainly not going to be the king or the palace who's leaking this, is it? It's obvious it's the Sussex camp. It's insiders from their camp. Who else could it be? There's only two options. It's either them leaking it or the newspapers are making it up. That there's a theme now, the newspapers, that they're building momentum which is what they do. They build like a wave until it turns into a wall of water and then it comes for them. So we're in the building of the wave and we're in November. We're not even in the month of December. Um, and it's coming thicker, faster, thicker, faster. I mean, every day is just faster, faster, faster. Um, they, they suggest their camp. Someone from Harry and Meghan's camp said, and I mean, these are... These are um, excuse my French, motherfucking cheeky things, they will need extra security than other members of the royal family if they deign to go to Sandringham for Christmas. So put your hands on your wallets, British taxpayers. I don't know who's going to foot the bill for that. They've not even been invited at this stage, so, you know, calm down. But they suggest that if they were, if they were to go, then they would require extra security. There's always got to be a demand, hasn't there? An apology, extra security. You know, just for the fuck of it, there's always got to be that little bit extra. I know from our two psychopaths, we've got these two narcissistic psychopaths in our lives. I mean, they, they've not been a bother the last year or two, actually. But um, they, they have always been like that. They always have to make an added request to stand above the crowd. They always have to make a scene. They, someone always has to make a grand gesture for them to make them feel better. These two idiots that we've known for years. Um, Harry and Meghan are the same. I mean, they've got to kick off about something. Nothing can be straightforward. Um, the article also says that the insider... And I'm thinking this insider is the Sussex camp, says it's such a shame for Charles not seeing Lillian Archie and a shame for Lillian Archie not seeing Charles and the cousins and spending time at Sandringham and saying that the whole situation has caused hurt on both sides. Sorry, the situation created by Lily and Archie's parents not created by the king, not created by the royal family, not created by, for example, Piers Morgan, Lizzie Cundy, Naniki Priddy, uh, Thomas Markle, Thomas Markle Jr., Samantha Markle, a whole host of Sussex Survivors Club from Kensington Palace, a whole host of dead bodies. It just goes on and on and on. But hurt has been caused on both sides and the way that it's written makes it sound like uh, Meghan and Harry have been 
hurt by being kept away. Can you even begin to imagine a Christmas with Harry and Meghan there, relatives that have, you don't know if they've got a tape recorder or a phone running in their pocket. You don't know, even if they're searched, you don't know if they're going to repeat stuff, embellish stuff, blatantly lie, talk to Omid Scobie. I mean, fuck's sake, what would you do with them? Put them in the gardener's cottage right at the very bottom. Serve Christmas, to have a butler take the Christmas dinner down with a silver dome for their family. Um, for Charles to see his grandchildren in the presence of many professional witnesses with cameras rolling to prove what was and wasn't said. I mean, they've got some serious front, haven't they? It's basically, they're begging, they are begging for an invitation to Sandringham because nothing is working for them. Why do they need an invitation to Sandringham? They want family, they want grandpa time. What about Thomas Markle? Why don't they go down and see him for Christmas? Hmm? Why don't they start there? Start mending fences there. Oh, wait a minute. I don't suppose Thomas Markle's got 28 million pounds tucked up his backside to give to that pair of leeches so they can run off and cause disaster and mayhem again. As I've said many times before, Hollywood A-listers have been watching this nightmare unfold and none of them are going to want Harry or Meghan around. None of them, believe me. They've got their own skeletons. They, they certainly don't need to invite people into their lives who are prone to making shit up, just blatantly making shit up. Bad enough if the skeletons got out of the closet. Never mind, made up, fictitious, fairy tale skeletons on top of that. So, I mean, she has made herself into the man who caught death in a sack. Now, for new, fairly new subscribers, because I did the story of the man who caught death in a sack last year, Basically, this this old soldier, it's kind of like a three wishes granted type story. And he was given a sack where anything or anyone he commanded to get into the sack would have to. And he had a card game with a load of devils in a castle to try and win it back for the Tsar. And he won the card game, but being devils, they reneged on the deal and they said, no, we're keeping the gold and we're going to kidnap you. So he produced the sack and said to the devils, get in this sack, which they, they had no choice. They got in and he bounced it and sat on it and hit it on the walls until they were all begging to be let out. Finally, he said, I'll let you out if you leave me in peace with the gold and go away and I'll never see you again. They said, yep, yep, deal done. So he opened the sack, but as the last devil went out, he grabbed it by the foot and the devil pulled so hard, his foot came off. And the soldier said, I'm going to keep your foot. And the day I need you, you will come and help me. And, and that led on to another part of the story. Well, in the end, basically, he wanted to die uh, and he put death in the sack. He demanded death be put in the sack so nobody could die. Absolutely nobody. And people were getting older and older and more ill and they couldn't die. And they cursed the fact that death wasn't coming. So he felt bad and he went and released death. But when he released death, death was so scared of him. He never came back for the soldier. He came for everybody else, but he would not come for the soldier. So the soldier went to hell to ask if he could get in. Oh, no, that's right. He went to heaven first and heaven said, no, no, you're not coming in. And he went to hell and the devils remembered him and they went, oh, you're not coming in. We remember you in your sack. And basically he ended up persona non grata wherever he went and still roams the earth today. And that's basically what Harry and Meghan have done. They have so right royally shit on everybody and everything from a great height with that Oprah interview. That was the that I think that was the worst. That was the worst of the whole lot. It was the first. It was the shock value. Everything wore off from then. That Oprah interview was the biggest mistake of their lives. Biggest mistake for Harry because that was the end, really, of the trust between him and his family. I'm sure. I know if it was a member of my family and they did that trust the trust will never come back they might be cordial in the future they might agree to sit in the same room but it's not the same as trusting someone and as far as Megan's concerned that Oprah interview was the instantaneous kiss of death for any hopes of a Hollywood career over finished gone and I knew that the day I saw it 
well, I had to wait a little while and watch it on YouTube, so I put it up in about five segments. But I got the gist of it in the immediate aftermath when it first came out. And there she is on these pathetic, uh, supposed red carpet events. Now, this last one she just did, women empowerment and stuff like that, um, they asked her, why do you think Suits has made a comeback? Well, I think it's probably because Netflix has been pumping it to death. But it, her response was interesting, really interested me. She said, well, I suppose it's hard to find good shows on Netflix that you can binge on these days. Ooh, that's not a very nice thing to say about Netflix. Could that be a little bitchy retort because Netflix have already parted company? I wonder, could the begging for an invitation back to the royal family be because they know there's another similar Spotify net announcement on the horizon? I mean, come on, can you imagine them walking to the church in Sandringham? Don't tell me there isn't going to be at least one person there with a tomato. I'll tell you what, she is a brave, brave woman if she does that. I think she should probably wear red, if that's the case. Or an egg. Can you imagine if a person got a right smack on the beak with the world watching how people would laugh? What would South Park do with that? What would Family Guy do with that? My God. And there are other shows like that that could do similar things. How can you imagine the royal family would feel? Catherine and William and their children sitting in the same room with Meghan and Harry when the, all the shit that's gone down? And still Meghan won't renounce her vicious sugars. I saw the royal grift recently and the, the lady who put the photograph up of Meghan and honest to God, I thought it was photoshopped. I really did. I mean, she just didn't look like Meghan. Her head looked like the shape of a peanut um, and she just didn't look like Meghan. And I thought someone's definitely photoshopped that. Apparently not. Apparently it was the girl that was there in the audience and Meghan went up to her. And this girl has been so savagely attacked by the sugars that apparently she, oh, she's deleted the, the picture. She even felt the need to put up a video defending herself, saying she loves Megan. She thinks Megan's beautiful. She doesn't understand what's wrong with the picture. Um, oh, my goodness. And so she has discovered what the sugars are like. So, I mean, unless Megan stands up and renounces these sugars, as that I think they are holding her back seriously in life, seriously, with their vicious, vicious, toxic vileldom. They're making her look so, so bad. Um, and Omid Scobie, of course, his book Endgame, which he, was, he wrote, I mean, let's face it, it's got to go to the publishers and stuff. So he would have finished writing it some months ago to give them time to go to the publishers and go to press. At that point, Harry and Meghan probably thought, yeah, stick the knife in. But now the money's run out, like, yeah, they'd put the brakes on it. Oh, not so sure about that. We had nothing to do with that. And I think the announcements are going to come faster, 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 faster. I really do. And um, I think we've all been on, the, well, I haven't read your comments lately, but I think we've all pretty much been on the money that this was coming, that something was going to come before Christmas. Something is definitely building. I can't see Charles inviting them. Unless he were to invite them, uh, and as I say, have them stay, I don't know, in an Airbnb, maybe 20 miles away, possibly. You know, not, in, not even in Kings Lynn. Have them stay, <laughs> I don't know, on, on the Norfolk Broads or something. Or in Ipswich, maybe. <laughs> they, can have a, they can have a little bungalow somewhere. And um, he could meet up with them, but I can't see them staying at Sandringham. I can't see them doing the Christmas morning walk. I mean, people are going to boo. I think they will. I really do. I couldn't see William or Catherine agreeing to walk even near them with their children. That Meghan and Harry would have to be far back. I mean, do you actually think it's going to happen? Half of me thinks, yes, they are going to go to Sandringham for Christmas. And the other half of me thinks, no, no, they're not. So, um, I mean, what Charles might say is, you can go to Balmoral for Christmas and Sandringham for the summer. And for those of you who know where the royal family go, it's basically wherever you go, we're going to in the opposite direction. 
I just think they've got the biggest flaming cheek ever. All this finding freedom and all their fans and cheerleaders saying they couldn't wait to get away from the toxic royal family. Well, who needs the royal family now? Apparently Meghan and Harry. And to me, that Daily Mail article, which I will put the link in the description this time, uh, it's blatant. It's blatantly obvious to me that that is the Sussex camp. If it isn't, then I await for them to sue the Daily Mail as they've sued the Daily Mail over teeny weeny infinitesimal fuck all points before. This would be a pretty big one, wouldn't it? Like suing Yahoo for saying Harry's $28 million in, dollars, $28 million in debt. I'm not hearing about any lawsuit over that, so I'm beginning to think it's true. Because, I mean, if she sued over her letter to Daddy, which was nothing really, was it? Or Harry suing over, I don't know, a fly looked at him sideways. These are pretty big faux pas if they're bullshit. I would expect to see lawsuits and yet, oh, maybe they've run out of money. And it can be tricky to sue people if you've run out of money. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for listening. I'm glad this one was a little bit more organised. We went to Westminster Abbey today and we saw Graham's relative's effigy. And I've got the most stonking photo because Sir Thomas is, is laying down on his, on his side like that. And I've got a picture of Graham next to Sir Thomas doing the same thing. So that was kind of awesome. We didn't pay £25 each to get in. We went to a service. It was an hour and a half long and it was really lovely. Um, and the acoustics in there. I mean, I've never sat through a service in a cathedral before. I have in a church but never in a cathedral, and cathedrals tend to you know, be a lot more echoey with um, stuff bouncing around, and it was really, really good, really good. It, time flew, I didn't, because I remember being a kid in church thinking, oh, when's this gonna end? But it didn't, it, it was really nice, um, and the people there were lovely. They were keen for us to leave after the service so they could get the tourists in and, I don't know, start weighing some coin in. Uh, and tomorrow we are going to raffles, um, for afternoon tea in the, um, I think they call it the drawing room. I'll have to ask them when we go tomorrow. So we'll see if there are any updates or puff pieces and discuss things further because this is really the moment I've been waiting for all these years is uh, where it's all coming to a head, where it's all coming to a crescendo. That's what I've been waiting for. And I'm following this story to the bitter end. I unashamedly, I am here for this 100%. We've had these two nutters in our lives and I've seen them have a few downfalls. I've never seen our two nutters actually have a big downfall. And I'm watching Harry and Meghan as a comparison. And the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And believe me, this one's going to land with a bump. And I, for one, will be there for it. As always, look forward to hearing your thoughts and opinions at some point. Maybe in maybe in raffles. I'm not sure. I don't think we can even read comments in there, but I'll try.